Hey guys, Ash here with another Ray Shot Legends champion guy this time on Mountain King. Old school, force affinity, highest HP inside the entire game. It is Mountain King. Now, I didn't see a guide out there on Mountain King uh, within the last like three years, but to be fair, not a heck of a lot has changed with this champion. However, the way that we can use him specifically in the arena, I look at this champion as an arena champion and a faction war champion. Uh, could certainly be used in other areas, but those are the two areas where I look for him to see his, his his biggest or most value value and utility to your team and your account. Uh, first, a few shout outs to you guys. We have Juke, uh, Juku looking for a Mountain King guy. We have Joey looking for Mountain King and uh, Nari. Uh, we have Limbo looking for a Staltus in Mountain King. Uh, and we have another Mountain King request from Nicholas. Let's go ahead and jump into it here, guys. By the way, guys, right before I started recording this video, this is not going to age too well, but I just pulled out of one ancient shard, I just pulled the brand new High Elf Wallmaster Athorian. Uh, can't wait to put out a guide on him. Expect one probably next week, I would say, here on the channel. I want to wait till the next Hydra reset happens so I can test him out there, but I'm thrilled about that pull. I got very lucky there. Uh, anyway, back to the subject at hand. In Mountain King, again, he's Force Affinity. I mean, this dude he absolutely fits the name, or should I say the aesthetics fit the name on Mountain King, right? He looks like this just absolute monster, absolute rock, right? Uh, really love the aesthetic on him, always have. Uh, one of the coolest looking champions in the game, and he's an original, an OG champion at that. Again, 31,000 base HP, that is insane. He has 1432 base attack, which is really good as well. His skills do scale off both attack and HP. HP. We'll talk more on that in just a moment. Uh, his speed is exceptionally low. He's the slowest legendary inside the entire game. So his claim to fame is the highest HP in the game and the slowest speed in the game, certainly out of legendaries there. So what does he do on his A1 Thunder Cleave attacks one enemy based on uh, HP and attack? On his A2 Enchanted Axe attacks one enemy, 50% ignore defense on a four turn cooldown when booked. And on the A3 Regal Force attacks one enemy, will ignore shield and block damage buffs. This is also on a four turn cooldown. Whenever Mountain King kills somebody, he's going to stack his attack up to 50%. If you kill two enemies in one round, aka the same arena battle, you will get that 100% attack boost, which really does make a pretty significant impact in his overall damage. It does reset each round, however, so you cannot take advantage of this, say, in, you know, Dragon. I think that Dragon's probably the most popular dungeon for Mountain King if you were going to use him in any of the traditional dungeons. Uh, unfortunately, if you kill an enemy on wave one or two, it's not going to carry over that bonus attack to the dragon. But if they're going to buff this champion, which I actually would love to see a buff to Mountain King, uh, I think they could buff that speed a bit, bring him up to like 92, 93. You know, it doesn't sound like much, but it's a big significant difference from where he is right now. Uh, I would also maybe bring down the Enchanted Axe or the Regal Force or both down to a four turn cooldown. And then lastly, I would not make this reset each round. That will give him significantly more damage against bosses, which could really help his kicks. He has no other damage other than just his, his raw swings, right? There's no burns, there's no poison, there's nothing else to his kit other than his, his one swing on each of his three attacks, right? So that does hold him back in a lot of areas, even including the arena in this game. We can't one-shot Rodos, where he should be great against Rodos because he's force affinity, he's super tanky, but you can't one-shot him because he has no multi-hit ability in his kit. Uh, obviously, against Stone Skin, you're just going to have to wait your enemy out as well. We'll talk more about his utility, his strengths, and his weaknesses uh, as the video goes on. Let me just show. go ahead and uh, pull up the build. Actually, before I do... I might as well talk about his uh, his scores in the game as well as his multipliers. So he does score a three overall grading according to hellhades.com. I think that's pretty accurate, you know. Uh, Doom Tower uh, gets a four out of five in waves. I do think that's a bit high. I would not recommend him in wave content in Doom Tower unless uh, you run him in a bolster set or a shield set. He's the best candidate for a bolster or shield in the game based on his base HP. So he can help keep the rest of the team alive at the same time uh, moreover you could also run him alongside a hex champion keep in mind that those single target hexes uh, or single target damage excuse me 
it's still going to be shared 10% on hex enemies, right? So 10% is a lot, right? So on single target, plus hex, plus bolster, you can make a case for him in wave content as well, right? Uh, I really want to stress that because I'm not going to show you that build in today's video. However, that's a way to get the most out of a pretty one-dimensional champion, right? Bolster set and hex alongside him. Anyway, Scarab King, he gets a four and a half out of five. Uh, I guess, again, with a shield set on or bolster set would make a lot of sense there. Ice Golem, he scores pretty well. In Dragon, he scores pretty well as well. His best use case, I think, is in the arena in Faction Wars, where he scores a four out of five. You don't see much Mountain King at all in Live Arena. He has less than a 1% pick rate, and his win rate is very low at 43%. In Gold 2, it goes even worse. 38% win rate in Gold 3, 27% win rate in silver four 29 percent win rate he's just not that great in the current meta that does not mean that you can't have a lot of fun with this champion and still get some utility out of him in your own arena teams keep in mind this is live arena where you see a mountain king you probably know he's going to be in lethal or savage and be an absolute tank uh, or be in bolster set and be an absolute tank as well right his, his multipliers on his A1, 0.27 HP plus one attack multiplier. Uh, strong overall rating. They kind of compare that to other champions. He's 394th in the game against Clan Boss and so on and so forth. His A1 is all right, but it's not, it's not incredibly strong. Uh, on the Enchanted Axe, this is his big ignore defense ability. It's a 0.3 multiplier plus a 0.18, uh, uh, a 1.8, excuse me, attack multiplier. Now that is godlike. It scores number nine in arena single target nuke content in the game. Uh, late game content godlike as well at number nine there early mid game content number 14 i'm not aware not that i'm doubting them but i'm not aware of how they're coming up with these uh scores you know uh are they just running them in aggregate because obviously there's so many factors that depends on you know the, the total damage i guess they're just running them surely off the multipliers uh for these champions and their base stats which scales very well in mountain king uh anyway Regal Force, his A3 ability, you can see it's somewhere in the middle between his A3 and his A2, but his A2 is definitely his hardest hitting ability, uh, with the exception of going against, you know, a block damage shield champion. Obviously, we go in with Regal Force's A3 ability. All right, guys, so my favorite build on Mountain King is going to actually be the Savage and Immortal. I used to have him built in a bolster set, and while you can get tremendous utility out of a bolster set, I really have nothing bad to say about that choice, bolster and or shield for the arena. You give your team a nice, incredibly beefy shield because we're building him with a lot of HP anyway. But I am just too tempted uh, to get the 100% ignore defense. One of the best things that you can achieve from a skill in the arena inside the entire game. And any champion that has an ignore 50% of target's defense, especially if they're already hitting hard with good multipliers, I know I can one-shot basically anybody with a savage and or lethal plus a Helm Smasher, right? So for that reason, I still prefer Savage and Immortal, uh, provided, you know, we can keep the rest of the team alive, either have another Bolster Champion, a Stone Skin Reviver, or just enough built-in support to keep everybody alive, or enough speed to make sure that we go first and disrupt what the enemy is trying to do. That being said, there's nothing wrong with going slow build, or fast build or medium build bolster tanky hp mountain king as well uh, i would build him the same exact way so the stat priorities are going to be the same the only thing that changes is take away the savage take away the ignore defense take away the lethal and add in instead a bolster and get that shield for everybody for three turns right the protected shield at that all right those are my two favorite builds by far on this champion those are the only two builds that personally i would consider and deploy so you notice that his multipliers do scale off of HP and of attack. So which should you prioritize? Well, you can always tell which the priority stat is by the stat that's listed first, meaning that it scales mostly on the first stat and then secondarily on the second one and so on, right? So you can see HP attack, HP attack, and HP attack. HP is going to be the first priority with this champion, and you'd be foolish not to put him in HP percentage on the chest, right? Percentage... We need to go with HP. I mean, that base 31,000 HP, there's no reason not to go with HP percentage on the chest piece. After that, we're going to go crit damage on the gauntlets. Uh, we're going to go speed on the boots. Now, from there, guys, 
It doesn't mean that I'm totally neglecting that 1432 base attack. I'm going HP on the banner, but I'm looking for banners with attack percentage substats. I'm looking for rings with good attack percentage substats as well. Heck, even ascension stats, right? So I don't want to totally neglect the attack percentage, but I'm primarily looking for attack percentage in my substats, whereas my main stats are going to be allocated towards HP. That's how I build my Mountain King, and you'll see that the damage will absolutely not disappoint especially considering we only have them at 230% crit damage, which is fairly low. You know, there's plenty of 300 plus crit damage Mountain Kings out there. I do want to give you one other option for building this champion, and that is a high resist Mountain King build. Now, he already has a built-in 90 resistance. That is exceptionally high. We see that with some dwarves, especially in the game, that very high base resistance. It can be challenging to kill a Mountain King, that's very, very high resist, along with a lot of HP and, you know, the whole nine. So I would say if you want to experiment with a little bit of an unorthodox Mountain King build, I would probably put him in, you know, a bolster set and a righteous set or a resistance set. Uh, maybe even stone skin to get that extra resistance there. Go resistance on the banner instead of HP and prioritize resistance on your amulet as well. And then you've got a super tanky and tough to CC Mountain King. Uh, on your hands for uh masteries i went down and i went uh support and offense there's no reason to go uh excuse me defense and offense there's no reason to go support on this champion uh you might as well just go i mean i guess that you could go with hp and make your way through uh but i think the best way to go is defense and offense here on defense i did go with uh resistance that way i could go with improved parry mitigating critical hits and then i came down with delay death and because he has a decently hard hitting a1 i went in with the retribution and deterrence as well now instead of deterrence especially if you build him in bolster or stone skin uh you can go with selfless defender instead that way you can soak up some of the damage on the first hit should your team not go first and a lot of mountain kings are not designed to go first the majority are not right uh on the offensive side of things we came down we picked up cycle of violence we picked up whirlwind of death anything that's going to boost his stats or his speed when he kills somebody is generally a good thing because well he kills a lot of targets pretty much as long as he gets a turn he's pretty much killing them you know provided Again, there's not stone skin or whatever. Uh, he does well against UDK as well, which is very nice because UDK can be very annoying. Uh, okay, so kill streak as well. Inflicted damage increases by 6% in the arena for each kill. That's going to be great. And it kind of parlays with his passive that already ramps up his attack anyway, right? So the longer on the battlefield, the better Mountain King's going to be. Guys, let's go ahead and go into the arena with this champion, right? Let's see what he can do here. So it is early on in the week. Uh, let me just get a fresh a fresh assortment of teams here. Let's go against a tanky UDK team. Now, this team is not perfect for our squad because, again, they have Rotos. Rotos should be amazing. And, and by the way, we'll run, we'll, we'll, we'll switch this team out, excuse me, and we'll run UDK on the same team as Mountain King. Having those two together can be very, very annoying. Actually got to resist on that Mountain King. Good for him. Good for him on resisting. Uh, let's go against... It's tempting to take out Rotos, but let's go against the Reviver here. Ally attack helps get around Mountain King and, or excuse me, UDK, and Mountain King finishes him, uh, finishes the Reviver, Siffy, off there, which is really nice. Let's come in there and increase the duration of their debuffs, increase the duration of our buffs at the same time. We have Lady Makage. I absolutely love Lady Makage, guys, but as I said, we will switch this team up. Again, we do not land on the, or the, the removal of the Stone Skin does not land there, which is a big bummer. Uh, because now we have to deal with the stone skin UDK, right? Now, the good news here is that they're not in a really good spot either, obviously, uh, but it's hard to show off Mountain King when we have a stone skin UDK that we can't remove. The good news is, is, you know, once that's gone, we have the perfect antidote to a UDK. Let's try to get rid of it that time, and we do. So now that UDK is a sheep, Thanks to Armand's The Magnificent, we'll be able to come in here and clean up wherever we need to. So let's target Rotos first. Let's go ahead and go in, test out the damage of that big A2 ability. Uh, we didn't even get it. It's fine, though. We still get the kill, and uh, that's going to do it here. So let's go uh, against one more team with this squad. A go f it's kind of a go-first team. I don't have Armand's in my best speed gear, but he is pretty fast. I think he's around. He's over 300 speed. 
uh, which should be fast enough for most of these teams. Hey guys, let's go against this team here. Uh, Narciss, White Queen, and uh, and Korra. And who do they have? Trunda? Who is their other nuker? I'm sorry. Marichka. My bad. All right. So an Arbiter. So we're going to come in here. We're dealing with one Stone Skin. We're going to come in there, steal some Turn Meter. We're going to turn the Stone Skin into a Sheep. And then we're going to start operating here. So we have Mithrala on this team. We don't have a Reviver on this team. So I like Mithrala because she's super high resist. She's a good response to uh, Armands, right? And my, uh, you know, when you add the accuracy and the resistance, my Mithrala is probably around, I guess, in the territory of, uh, of around 1,000 resistance, I guess, you know? Uh, we're going to come in there. Unfortunately, the poisons against Marichka are not going to be ideal. Uh, we do have a, a, a skill that ignores block damage. Now, in this situation, I really want to get rid of the Reviver, but I don't think I can withstand a White ki uh, King uh, Narciss. But I, I can't ignore him. I have to go against the Reviver right now. I could have also gone against Marichka because she's going to be revived anyway. Uh, but... We had to go again. I felt like that was the right decision because even though we might die here, and we don't, uh, she has the ability where she resets his cooldowns anyway upon revival. At least we CC him in the process, right? So now we can come in, switch forms with Makage, and then we can... Uh, oops, I meant to stun them, but it's not going to matter. We can stun on the greatest hits. And now we can just pop them off one at a time. So we have the A2 available. Let's go ahead and kill Marichka. 177k. Those are the numbers that we're looking for here. Let's turn a uh, white queen into a sheep. This is a really nice kind of control. All three of these champions are basically controlling the enemy team while Mountain King methodically, one at a time, pops everybody off, right? So again, we're ready to come in here with another stun. They can't do anything. They can't really operate here. Now, keep in mind, we have the 100% attack bonus right now on Mountain King, right? So now we can basically one-shot anybody, even though uh, one of his earlier hits was a little bit lackluster. Let's go ahead and do kind of a slower team for one more battle here, guys. Uh, let's go against this squad. And then let's take out Makage and Armands. Let's go with, I don't know, maybe a... Let me just see. Let's just go Vogoth. He has an accuracy aura, certainly not what we really are going for here, but whatever. Let's go Vogoth, and let's go... I think I have Vogoth in a bolster set, too, which is going to be great. And then let's go... It's cool. We can kind of fill in this last spot with whoever the heck we want, right? Uh, ideally, I like a buff remover, even though it's kind of dangerous in this meta. So I'm going to go with Sun Wukong. And as a matter of fact, I might as well put Sun Wukong in the lead, right? Get that speed aura. Even though we're not going to go first, we're very unlikely to go first. At least in this situation, we have a little bit of speed working for us. I am personally not a fan. I used to be. But no longer am I a fan of really building anybody other than UDK or more to Macabre in super, super slow builds. You'll notice even with my, uh, you know, my Mountain King in this video, he's not slow, you know. Uh, okay, so what are we dealing with here? Dracomorph, we don't really care so much about Dracomorph. Uh, Kyoku is, is annoying, and we're dealing with two Spirit Affinity champions. So I think the right move is focusing on uh, Marichka first. We do a decent amount of damage, but again, she's under a protected strength and increased defense. Uh, so let's go ahead and try to pop her again. Sun Wukong uh, takes care of things. Now we're dealing with the strengthen, the uh, increased defense, and the ally protection on the enemy team. We can come in here and try to provoke. We do with Vogoth. Vogoth is so underrated in the arena, man. I mean, he's not going to be super, super endgame, but he's still, he's still got it, right? We go in there. Not a ton of damage against Draco Morph, but still, you know, again, look at Mithrala, man. Look at all these petrifications everywhere. Again, we're not even trying to, like, go crazy with controlling this team, but we do it again, right? Let's do one more battle here, guys, uh, with Mountain King. Uh, I don't think I'm going to show you him in, like, a bunch of dungeon content today just because... Uh, I love him in the arena in Faction Wars, as I said. You can definitely use him in areas like... Actually, as a matter of fact, if you're still looking for some Mountain King fun out there, I do have a video on my main channel, probably a couple years old now, where I built five Mountain Kings on the same team, and I went against a bunch of dungeon bosses. So just search all Mountain King team, and it will come up on YouTube. I'll try to actually post that. Look at that. 
kills one DK, UDK, excuse me, in one shot. One DK, what? Uh, kills them nice and easily in one shot. Don't have to worry about annoying UDK, right? Uh, by the way, Mithrala, I wasn't using her in the arena. I mean, I already told you guys this, but just to reiterate, I wasn't using her much in the arena until Armands came along, and now I have been using her quite a bit more uh, just because hitting that that high resist and cleansing the rest of the team has become pretty imperative right now in the meta. Uh, so there it is, guys. Mountain King, you know? Let me pull up that video right now. So here it is right here, guys. Uh, five max Mountain Kings versus raid bosses. So I'll link this video if you want to see more fun Mountain King content. Uh, I'll link this in the pinned comment and the description of this video, guys. Let me know what you think of Mountain King after all these years. Does he still got it? Or does it need a buff? I think it needs a buff personally, but I still think he's a very cool and intriguing and oftentimes kind of a fun champion to use, even despite him not being super powerful in the current meta. Guys, thank you for watching. Keep the champion guide request coming in the comments below. Much love, and as always, take care, guys.